Welcome back to I Can Science That. We are continuing to science the Rayleigh criterion. This is part three of the series where we are going to look at how the Rayleigh criterion is related to perspective. And let's start with a quick review of perspective. I've done some perspective before, so I'll put a video up there if you want to review exactly where I got this from. But here is a simple formula that you can use to determine the angular size of any object viewed from any distance. What we see here is that as an object moves farther away, even though it is actually the exact same size, it will look smaller. And what we mean is smaller in angular size. So this angle here is what we calculate by this formula. And those were the angles that the Rayleigh criterion was referring to. If an angle, say alpha 2 here, is smaller than the Rayleigh criterion, then that tree in that distance will not be resolvable anymore. It will just look like a green blur. So let's take this combination of perspective and Rayleigh criterion and apply that to a brick wall. In a brick wall, we have uniformly sized bricks that are stacked one on top of each other, like so. And we could then ask not just is the entire wall resolvable, but are the individual bricks resolvable? And what does that look like? The individual bricks being the same size will give us alphas of approximately the same, although you will note that uh, this angle is slightly smaller than this angle down here. Now, in order to resolve an individual brick apart from the one next to it, we would be looking for the angular size of each individual brick to be greater than the Rayleigh criterion. However, we'll note that the bricks being all the same color as they are, will make it extremely difficult to actually resolve one from another. In order to see the difference between them, what we need to see is a distinctly different color at some point. And that distinctly different color is going to come from this skinny little piece of mortar in between them. So with a standard brick wall or a cinder block wall, you would only be able to resolve individual bricks if the mortar line in between the bricks was itself greater than the Rayleigh criterion. So that's, that's a bit much. So instead, Let's go for a high contrast checkerboard pattern where each brick is a distinctly different color than the one next to it. And at this point now, the Rayleigh criterion tells us at what point the angular size of an individual brick will make it no longer resolvable compared to its neighbor. So let's take a look at a brick wall painted in a checkerboard pattern, something like this. Now, at this distance, we set up our telescope and we look through it, and we can clearly see the individual checkerboards. And at this distance, even the mortar line between the bricks is easily resolvable. At this distance, the angular size of each individual brick is well above the Rayleigh criterion. We back up, set up our telescope, and zoom in on the wall, and now we see something like this. At this point, the lines between the bricks are not resolvable at all, but the individual bricks are still resolvable. They've begun to blur one into another, but at this distance, the angular size of each individual brick is still well above the Rayleigh criterion, and we can resolve that that is, in fact, a checkerboard pattern. Let's back it up and take another look. At this distance, the angular size of each individual checkerboard is pushing the limits of the Rayleigh criterion, and they are starting to blur into just a solid mass of color. But we can still just barely make out the checkerboard pattern. So at this distance, we are still above the Rayleigh criterion. If we back up one more time, we'll see what it looks like when the angular size of an individual brick on that checkerboard wall drops below the Rayleigh criterion, this is what you get. You can still see that there is a gray mass here. There's a different color here than there is here, and that indicates that something gray is in this area. But you cannot resolve it 
at all. And that is what it means to exceed the Rayleigh criterion. So how is the Rayleigh criterion related to perspective? We have seen that as objects go into the distance, they appear to be smaller. And by that, we mean smaller in angular size. Perspective gives us a formula by which we can calculate the angular size of any object given its physical dimension and the distance from the viewer. And the Rayleigh criterion tells us that as the object becomes smaller and smaller, it begins to become blurry. The Rayleigh criterion gives us uh, an angular size at which we can't even make out the checkerboard anymore. And the object appears to be nothing more than a blurry mass of uniform color. That's it for video number three. Join me in the final installment where we take a look at how all this applies to objects being obstructed bottom up as they move into the distance. See you over there.